What's up guys, Matty here. So let's go back to Kafka now. Let's start learning about this new tool called KSQLDB. This is a tool that will allow you to create data streaming applications like we did with Kafka Streams, but we're going to be using SQL. And that's not even all of it. You will be able to create connectors from databases like MongoDB or, uh, or Postgres and put the data into Kafka and then move the data back into the databases all with one tool. So this is very, very interesting and powerful stuff. You will be building data streaming applications really fast. Welcome to Programming with Mati. Right, let's start. So what is KSQL? KSQL is an open source event streaming database. It uses SQL to create data streaming applications. So this is one of the latest uh, things that the Confluent team, the guys who developed Apache Kafka have created. Uh, even though it's one of the last things, it's not like it's a very recent thing. It has been evolving during the years. It started as a simple SQL layer on top of Kafka streams, but now it has developed into something more complex where you can actually create a lot of different applications on top of KSQL DB. So let's take a look at the different features that we have in this new application. As I told you before, this is built on top of Kafka streams. So we can apply all the knowledge that we have from our Kafka stream series into this one. It helps you model data as streams and tables. As in Kafka streams, the data can be modeled and you can create streams and tables. You can create queries on streams and tables and these queries are called push queries, which means that they will emit results every time there is new data available. Then you can create materialized views and these can be queried in a traditional way using SQL. And lastly, this is a very, very cool feature that you don't have available in Kafka Streams directly. You can define connectors for external data sources and sinks. This means that you can define a connector for a SQL database or um, Salesforce or whatever that you have externally, or maybe MongoDB. You can create connectors that will take data from those sources and put it into Kafka and then take data from Kafka and put it into those, those sources again. And this is uh, taking advantage of another component that was created by Confluent called Kafka Connect. Basically, you can run Kafka Connect inside KSQL DB. So let me tell you a little bit about the architecture and the deployment of KSQL DB. So basically, you will need a Kafka instance running. So if you have a Kafka cluster already running with Zookeeper and multiple Kafka brokers, then you will be able to install KSQL DB on the side and connect it to Kafka. And then in the KSQL DB, you will be able to create tables, you will be able to create streams, and then you will be able to create push queries on those streams so that every time there is new data coming from Kafka into that stream, the push query will emit that data back into Kafka directly. Then you can also create connectors, as I told you, uh, using Kafka Connect that runs inside the KSQL server. And this is uh, very convenient because you can use external sources like MongoDB, uh, a SQL database, or you can even create your own custom connectors. And uh, you can leverage on this to create connectors that will send data into Kafka. And then you can also use connectors to take data from Kafka into the external sinks. And then, as I told you before, the tables uh, can be uh, queried using pull queries. So traditional SQL queries. So this is very, very interesting stuff. And it will revolutionize the way we create uh, data streaming applications. And as you know, I usually like to introduce these things with tutorials. So 
I'll create a simple, very, very simple tutorial, a hello world tutorial uh, for KSQL. And what we're going to do is we'll have a Kafka instance running and we'll create a user's topic. Then we'll, we'll also have a KSQL DB instance running. We will create a user stream and with KSQL command line tool, we will create this stream, we will insert data into the stream, and then we will select the data from the stream. And we'll talk a little bit about what is going on. All right, so for our convenience, I have created this uh, tutorial um, that will be available in GitHub as always. Uh, and you will be able to follow along this, um, this guide here, but I'm going to explain a little bit more. So this guy, this readme, is going to tell you how you can run this demo and uh, this very simple tutorial. But let's talk a little bit what we're going to do. Um, we have a Docker Compose, as we always have in our tutorials. And in this Docker Compose, we will have Zookeeper running. We'll have Kafka. We will have a container to create topics that we usually use. And then We'll use we'll have a ksql db server and then a ksql db client uh, command line tool. You can see all these in here in the Docker Compose. Here is Zookeeper and Kafka that we always have. We also always have in our tutorials the create topics container. And uh, what we have new here is the ksql db server. And this ksql db server has some configuration that we won't go into much details now, but the configuration is really simple. Um, it's it, it basically has where the server is running in the local host, and then what is the Kafka server? Where is the Kafka server running? So we have it in the Docker network, so we use Kafka, the name of the container, and the port. Uh, so going back to our Docker Compose, you'll see um, the ksql db server has an image for the ksql db server and then it will have the commands to start with the properties file and then we have the ksql db client which is a command line tool that we can use to access uh, and to interact with the ksql db server so this tool is very convenient and we'll be using it in our tutorial to understand what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start our services. So I'm going to run the docker compose up command here. We'll wait a little bit. Okay, everything seems to be running now. So I'll create another terminal. And with this command here, we will be able to access the ksql db client and we will connect to the ksql db server so that we can interact with it so i'm running this in a different terminal and you should be able to see something like this if you don't see this it means that you need to you wait a little bit maybe the server has not started yet but in this case service is running everything's working fine and the first thing we want to see if to verify that everything is running properly, we can run this show topics. And if you look at this file that you will have in scripts, create topics, you will you'll see this where it says uh, create topic user. So we should have this topic already created if we run show topics. You see? we have the users topics here let's go back to our readme and so now what we want to do is set the ksql consumer to earliest this is how we did it in in kafka streams remember that the reason we do this is to get the first messages even though we start the consuming after the messages were inserted we want to start reading from the earliest possible. So we are going to run this. And you see successfully changed local property auto offset to earliest. 
that's fine. Now we want to create our stream. So let's take a look at this syntax. It says create stream users. And you see, this is how what we are talking about when we say that ksql uses sql we're using sql to create a stream of users and this stream is going to have a key this is the key of the kafka topic basically it will have one field called username and the type of the field is going to be bakar and then we also have this section here for additional uh, parameters these additional properties for this stream, we're going to discuss them in length later. But what we should know here is that we're defining basically which topic we should read the messages from and also the, the value, the format of the value, which in, we want it to be in JSON. So let's go ahead and create this stream. Okay, you should see this message here saying stream created. We can verify that the stream was created running show streams. So if I copy this here, you see we have stream name users, Kafka topic users, key format, Kafka value format, JSON, and window false. That's how it should look for you as well. And now we are going to insert data into our stream. So again, you see this is SQL. We can insert data in our stream using SQL. This is very, very convenient because um, it's very natural for us developers to use SQL. And SQL is a great language for people who are not as technical as us developers. So a lot of people who are not technical and do not know anything about programming probably know some SQL. So let's insert this data here. So we're going to do an insert command. And in here we have the, the column name we would say in SQL and then the values for that column. So basically we want to insert three users with the their names. Let's put it here. And now we should have three users in our stream. So what else can we do? We can create a query. In this query, we're going to select from our user stream. So you see, select from users. And we want to add this hello plus username. So we're going to get the username from users and add it to hello as we can do in SQL as well. And we can name it as we do in SQL with aliases. So we create this new alias for this, uh, for the result of this operation. And we also add this emit changes so that we can see directly the output in our console. And this will start a consumer for our stream in our console and we will be able to see the results and we can even see more results if we add more data into the stream. So let me show you. First, let's create this query and we will see this result here. As we see here, we have the greeting. And now if I go to a different terminal and I start the ksql client as well here, I can insert more data here. So let's put this here, values and let's say um, Charles here. Uh, so I'm inserting new data in this stream. And if we go back to our terminal, now we have a fourth column. So this is what a push query is. It's a query that will keep emitting new values every time there is a change in the data. If every time there is new data available uh, in the stream, the query is going to keep pushing this data into the consumer. And finally, what we can do is we can go to the Kafka server and create a console consumer and see what's going on in the topic. 
So with this command, I'm going to log in into the Kafka server and then create a console consumer. And as you can see here in the topic, these four messages have been created. And these messages are JSON in a structure. They have the username value and you see the different uh, messages here. One thing that you can notice is that they are not in order because they have been added into different partitions. So that's why there's no order in particular here. But this is very, very interesting what's going on here. And as you can see, it has been really easy for us to create a, a Kafka server, create a KSQL server, and then create this stream, add data into the stream, consume it, transform that data using the select query and see how that data is being pushed into the consumer itself. So this is just the tip of the iceberg for KSQL DB, but it's a very, very interesting thing that, that we can do. And in the future tutorials, we'll see how we can create more streams, how we can emit this data. We'll create connectors from databases into Kafka and out of Kafka. We'll also create tables and query traditional SQL queries that we can use leveraging the, the Kafka streams data stores. So this is very interesting stuff. All right, so I hope you like this tutorial that I put together just to get it started with KSQL DB, because as I told you before, this is just the tip of the iceberg for this tool. We'll have to learn so much more like streams, tables, um, windows, and every concept that we have from Kafka streams, we can put in this. And then we also have connectors, queries, and so much more. There'll be a lot of things that we can learn together and you will be very, very thankful that you'll have this tool in your tool belt. So if you like this tutorial, remember to like, subscribe and comment. It really helps me when you do that. And also remember that I will start a series of live coding sessions with Globant about functional programming. So if you haven't signed up yet, go into the link in the description. It's going to be so much fun in these live sessions that I will do with Globan, the company I work for as a subject matter expert. So I'll be waiting for all of you there. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe. Bye.